All right, our next speaker is not a newcomer to DEF CON. Sounds like this is his third time here. Give him a hands up. And we were talking, sounds like we're gonna hear some fun stories about OPSEC. We all love that, huh? All right, so uh, big round of applause again for uh, Tomar Barr. Hi, everybody. Uh, who came here to have some fun? Yeah. So I'm going to give up this one. Okay, for the one that will shout uh, the loudest during the presentation. I will give you the sign when to shout. Uh, <laughs> I will give you a sign. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, my name is Tomer Barr. I am currently leading uh, SafeBridge Labs as the Director of Security Research, and my main focus is on vulnerability research and nation-state APT research. Uh, this is my third time in a row at DEF CON, so I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Okay, so I will start, start by describing the research assumptions and approach and then I will describe the operation security of uh, first APT threat actor and continue with several examples of uh, large scale cyber crime threat actors and then we'll turn to different state sponsored threat actors. So stay tuned. Uh, the research state of mind is focused on understanding the adversary, both the nation state and the cyber criminal uh, that launch attacks uh, on the Western world. Uh, if we can uh, win this mind game, we can understand their plans, motives, tactics, and techniques. So every research starts with assumption, right? So let's describe them. Uh, the first assumption is that advanced threat actors is not necessarily the same as strong operation security. And you will see unbelievable mistake uh, later on. Uh, the second assumption is that some threat actors are lazy and feel comfortable uh, even after a research report was published about their specific activities. Uh, they, so they continue as, as usual. Uh, and last, it will be a very good idea to study them uh, in their backyards. So in order to understand their plans, uh, their targets, uh, to do a damage control, and so on. Uh, and I developed this uh, OOPSEC meter, you can see it. Uh, and for comparing different threat actors' operation security mistakes. And the grade is from zero bad points, it's the best, to the 100 bad points. Uh, there are 10 categories, each category can give 10 maximum points, and the categories uh, merge, measure how much uh, data we can gather on victims, uh, attribute the attacker's identity, and uh, how much we can uh, influence their campaign to do a takedown, take temporary takedown, um, or a disinformation attack, and so on. So in the next hour, I will present uh, those APTs. Uh, so whenever you see this uh, symbol of the hour meter, just shout your grade from zero to 100, and uh, at the end, you can get a flag. Okay. Uh, so our first threat actor is located in the, the Gaza Strip. It has been active since 2012, so they have a decade of uh, malicious activity, uh, attacking both Windows and Android targets. In 2017, it was first discovered. Uh, the threat actor has self-developed a web panel with two-factor authentication login. The problem was that navigating directly to the inner pages resulted in full access to the system with no authentication required. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's funny. Uh, on the right, you can see the exfiltrated keylogs of the victims. So it's blurred for privacy, right? Uh, Quantum Leap to 2022, the threat actor is still active and masquerading as Google uh, Play app. Uh, and the malware, was uh, uploaded from Gaza by one of the victims or by the attacker themselves for testing purposes, and the certificate was also signed in Gaza. Uh, the malware has plenty of collection capabilities like SMS, call logs, contacts, record audio, and much more. And the exfiltration is done via HTTP post request. Uh, 
and the malware exfiltrate the data to this URL via post. So the Laravel code, the backend code uh, of the C2 server, expects a post request. But when sending a GET request instead, an error invokes and exposes the MySQL DB credentials. So it's unbelievable, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I just, you should see me when I, sh I saw that. Uh, it's, it was crazy. Uh, and all C2 servers are vulnerable. Uh, here are the credentials of the Windows based victim database. The former one was the Android uh, victim based database. So on 2017, uh, the first stage malware code downloaded the second step malware, and the name was ddd.zip from the city server pal4u.net. Uh, and the name of the folder was five times the letter Z. Uh, on 2022, a subdomain of the same domain was used. Uh, app.pal4u.net, and this time the CCC directory holds all the victims' exfiltrated data. So I will show a demo in a few uh, moments how to download all of the victims' data. I was able to map almost 8,000 victims, most of them in the Gaza Strip, but others in other Middle Eastern countries. So the the, the amount of uh, exfiltrated data is huge. Almost uh, 500 compressed megabytes uh, is the average exfiltrated data for day. Uh, and our estimation is that the total size of the exfiltrated data is between at least two tera to three terabytes. Another uh, OOPSEC mistake, which we'll, we'll see it's very common among uh, all threat actors, is open DIRS C2 servers. So as we can see, the C2 server uh, was updated at February 2022. Uh, let's check if this is a one-time mistake, and of course not. Uh, the C2 server is uh, opened here and include a 12 megabyte file in the name of the domain name of the C2 server it's called uh, Tawaji or something like this uh, .zip file, which include the full backend logic. Because if you try to uh, download the backend code from just by surfing, you cannot do it because it's a PHP or SPX or something like this. It's not uh, downloadable. But when they leave a compressed a folder of all of the stuff, all of the content in the website, I can download it. So I get the source code of their C2 server. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so uh, the upload file logic uh, is done well uh, uh, using a unique ID to randomize the uploaded file name and make it difficult uh, for hackers to find a potential web shell they uh, uploaded because you, you cannot predict the file name. And the upload itself is limited to a specific file type uh, by a whitelist, which is good. Uh, but on the other end, the Node.js revealed the upload path of the, uh, where the files will be uploaded to, which is not a, a, which is bad practice, uh, eventually. OK, so let's see a little demo. No demo? Oh. oh. So we will serve to the CCC directory. You can see all of the files uh, arranged by date, so it's very convenient. We will download uh, one of them, the smallest one. Uh, it's like uh, 150 megabytes. And then there is a password. I brute force it. And uh, it will extract all of the, the files. I will uh, sort it and uh, see the, the, I will show you the file types. Uh, that are uh, uh, included, like, like the, it's like uh, screen captures and uh, images from the phone, from the Android phone, and also a lot of uh, voice recording uh, during the, using the, mi the microphone of the Android device. Uh, so you see a lot of files in just one day. I have like uh, one year of that stuff. Uh, and I will just open one of them and see, uh, show you that uh, it's working. Just a second. Is it moving on? Oh, sorry. I will. Uh, never mind. Believe me, it's working. <laughs> it's demo. Even if it's pre recorded, it's not working. Okay, so uh, that's your time to shout. What do you think the score should be? I gave it 47. I see you. I see you. <laughs> oh, okay. 
You are leading, you are leading. Okay, for now, for now. Uh, okay, so as you can see, uh, they failed because I was able to uh, build a victim heat map, uh, understand their attack vector, access the C2 backend code, and so on. Okay, so uh, different threat actors will do different mistakes, and so we can compare them using the OOPSEC meter. Okay, uh, moving on to a different threat actor. Uh, this time, uh, it will be, I will focus on a threat actor cybercrime activity in Iran, and I will describe the five steps of the infection chain uh, one by one and the OOPSEC mistake uh, they have made. But uh, generally speaking, they are uh, up to uh, stealing credit cards. It's, it's a large scheme, uh, scale cybercrime, and let's describe it. So on the left is a partial list of the C2 server that were alive uh, at the moment, at the time of the check, it was the middle of January this year, and one of them stored the entire code on the pay.zip file at the C2 server. So the same mistake like we saw uh, earlier. So I downloaded the, the, the zip file, and the victims are found in different second-hand online market sites. Uh, one of the sites is called divar.ir, and the left script extract phone numbers from published ads on Divar. So if you want to sell something, I know your car or something like this, you just publish an ad with your phone number and they have an API to extract all of the phone numbers of victims in Iran. Uh, the script on the right will send them a threat phishing text message via Telegram. Okay, th this is funny. The full victim list is textual and downloadable. Phone numbers are available uh, in the users.lst file, which is downloadable. And, but even more funny, the C2 server internal files are exposed. Even the bash history command output is available to download. So I uh, don't believe it. I, I found plenty of uh, smishing lures. Uh, threat uh, of arrest in sev 72 hours, and in Iran it's scary. Uh, COVID-19 payments and even dating site. When the victim tried to chat, he will be threatened to pay, or his details will be sent to the government. And he is redirected to a payment site, uh, and uh, the sites are all open here. So uh, the payment allegedly can only be done via an Android app. You can see it on the bottom left. Uh, it's done automatically. Uh, and it's a dual attack, so they spy on the SMS to get the two-factor authentication codes, and also redirect the payment on the attacker fake site to fish his victim credit card. So the malware, the, the Android malware, just uh, exfiltrate all the SMS messages. And decompiling the Android malware, we can see that the, the resource files all the, the phishing URL back there. And here is the PHP page that uploads the victim SMS, this is the backend code, to the C2 server using hard-coded text file name. Uh, this is not a bad pract a good practice. And the exfiltrated SMS are also textual, predictable, and downloadable. Uh, so it's very convenient. And the file name here is lydiateam.txt. Please remember the Lydia. We come to it uh, later. Uh, and we can also see, it's hard to see, I know, uh, the incoming SMS messages. And in this case, they tried 16 different phishing lure messages in order to infect this specific uh, victim. So it's crazy. And this is a fake payment site uh, masquerading as a legit government pay site. So at, 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 at the top, you can see the IP address, they even don't have the domain name for the C2 server. But b below that, it's the URL of a, a real uh, uh, payment site in Iran. Uh, so the victim are, uh, is allegedly redirected to a legit government site. But it's a fake page, and the credit card is stolen. Uh, this is the uh, backend code for storing, uh, stealing the credit card. Uh, the, the details are collected and sent to the attacker Telegram group. And the sub subject of if each exfiltration is new card received. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a typo there. And it will help us later. User credentials are exfiltrated as well. And querying the Telegram group, this is where it becomes interesting, using the Telegram bot API, uh, includes a valid invite. So uh, you can see it marked uh, in blue. And I just copy paste it, and I'm a new member of their private uh, groups. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> it was very interesting. Uh, in this case, thank you. 
In this case, the victim SMS data and credit card are split into three groups, and, uh, and uh, they, they have all the data there. Uh, the data telegram group is misconfigured uh, to display all group members and hackers without even joining the group. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, the, the SMS and data group are not private. All members are administrators. Everybody is welcome to join, uh, but we, without access to the messages themselves. So it's a problem. Uh, I joined with my real name, Tomer Bar, to all groups and stayed there for a while. Uh, but there was no access to the messages by new members. Uh, you can see my name here in, at the top. Uh, I used my real name, my real Telegram account. Uh, and all of, all of the other are Iranian hackers, right? Uh, so uh, I didn't have uh, access to the, to the messages. Uh, but the card group is not private and all data is accessible. Uh, during uh, using the Telegram bot API called get updates. I will use it a lot uh, during uh, uh, this uh, research. And uh, then I found the, the group they called so good. And indeed, they know what they are doing. They're so good. Uh, which, it's like the main group. Uh, and pay attention to the user Baba Zoro username. Uh, he's one of the uh, threat actors. Uh, we will focus on it later on. Uh, and so good allows access to all messages without being required to join. So hundreds of credit card, I, I was able to join, but didn't need to. Uh, hundreds of credit card details are listed. And on the left, we can see that one of the sites was detected uh, by uh, Chrome uh, to be a malicious site. And they exchange messages between themselves. Let's do that, let's do that. And uh, on the right, you can see uh, shared malware files and even attackers' voice messages between themselves. I don't know Farsi language, uh, but it's interesting. Uh, and a deeper analysis, uh, you can see it's um, amazing, uh, revealed massive activity, hundreds of malware samples and hundreds and thousands of C2 servers infrastructure. So it's, it's kind of a big infrastructure, so I was curious. Uh, and believe me, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's, let's continue. Uh, a simple Google search reveals that Lydia team uh, the name of the file that we mentioned before, is a user who is active in the professor phishing telegram group. So he has an academic degree, and uh, which includes 15,000 members. Searching for new card received in Google with the intentional uh, typo seen before, uh, we returned with uh, a, a second group, Zalem phishing, uh, and the result includes stolen credit card. So in Google, uh, in Google you can get the stolen credit card, yeah? Uh, and Baba Zoro is our own uh, so good team member, is the owner of Zalem Fishing Telegram Group with 30,000 members. So he's a big shot there. And I found many Iranian fishing group. Some of them uh, has a few members, and those was the most interesting group, uh, but up to 80,000 members for just one group. And the large group are usually used for exchanging or selling fishing kits or uh, stolen goods. And I was able to join all of the, this group and, and much more, like uh, 20 groups. And uh, I, I had like 100%, but there was just one group called the uh, must leak, uh, which requires approval by admin. So I said, what the heck? I sent him a, a join request with my real name. I am Israeli and got an approval. So I have 100%. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go technical. Uh, decompiling the malware. Uh, focus on the Lydia TXT class. It's the Android malware with the name of Lydia. And the exfiltrated SMS data are uh, messages, sorry, were uploaded to the C2 server. And the randomization of the name was done on the malware side. So no victim unique data was used. Uh, so if the malware upload the file name, Victim.txt, it will be victim.txt on the city server. And the file name was a number with a five digit. So very hard to guess. And I developed a brute force tool to download all the exfiltrated files. The Android C2 server is based on a Fire-based API and also Telegram-based uh, API uh, developed in Python. And one of the attacker is, uh, let's do attribution. Uh, we know it's Iranian, but who is it? Uh, one of them is uh, called Amir Ranjabar, and he's testing his own malware 
on his own machine. So never do it, never do it. <laughs> and one of the SMS <laughs> is from an Austin provider uh, confirming is a newly registered domain, which is the C2 server, and it's called sanairan.xyz. So now we know it's, a, it's, it's darker, right? Maybe it's in charge on the C2 server's infrastructure or maintenance, I don't know, but uh, we have his name, but th that's not it. Uh, I have his SMSs because he ran it on his Android device. So I have his account number in the National Bank of Iran and his phone number. I have two phones. One ends in, uh, with 8.5 if you can see it uh, and the full address at home if you can w want to visit him. And uh, the attacker also offer hacking services in a, I don't know, this site like professional hackers uh, and using the same phone number. So we have a cross that it's, it's, it's a real uh, phone number. Uh, it appears that Lydia team is selling and promoting their phishing and Android malware services with three possible plans. So you can choose uh, from a basic plan to a full phishing as a service plan. And they offer dozens of phishing kits uh, for customers, let's say customers, for example, Instagram account phishing, but you can see a list of all the sites that they duplicate and uh, are used as a phishing lures. Uh, and they use a pyramid structure. Uh, the bot is given for use in return for 20% of the collected credit card. Uh, so uh, I, I Google it, uh, Google Translate, and uh, this is the uh, this is the translation to English. And the SMA spy, uh, I, I gave it a 65. What do you think? <laughs> Save it. Oh, this is a, this one, this one. <laughs> yeah, second. Okay. Okay, let's continue. So I ask, us, uh, I ask myself uh, if this uh, Telegram bot API is commonly used by other threat actors. And the reason, uh, the answer is totally positive, right? Uh, so a simple pivoting on the api.telegram.org, the official site, uh, using virus total graph, uh, provide me with a positive answer. We have found actually two types, executable with hard-coded Telegram bot API tokens, and chat IDs, and also C2 backend code kits that were uploaded to VirusTotal by I don't know who, but uh, it's, it's there, so it's easy to find them. And the sec second type is more, I found it more interesting, and I developed an automated script to download all chat and check if they are still active, because it can be like uploaded like uh, six months ago or, or something like this. And I, I got a lot, a lot of uh, active uh, groups, and I have their tokens, so I can control some of their activity. Um, and the first interesting case, uh, this is a new threat actor. Uh, it's called, they call themselves Ukraine Logs. So think about the uh, former uh, talk. Uh, and this group used malware to steal cryptocurrency from victim machines. And it's a very large scale operation. Uh, we'll see it in a minute. And they used dozens of malwares and loaders. But uh, one, of the, one of the interesting one was uh, a loader that download and execute mouse stealer, which is a fault of a uh, Vidar stealer, if you know it. And mouse stealer actually steals two-factor authentication and cryptocurrency. And the code is packed with unknown packer. And the main function was actually so complex and it was even too big to even been displayed in IDOGRAPH. So it was a, a very sophisticated packer, but I just try it on and locating the correct address uh, in which to place the breakpoint was quite easy. Uh, it's like old school. And uh, after that, I have the unpacked version. So I, st I started to analyze it and found uh, that the, this info stealer is interesting uh, because of uh, three checks that is, is doing uh, anti uh, malware anti-detection uh, checks. First, it, uh, it uses anti-emulation against Windows Defender. Uh, I didn't know that at that time, but Windows Defender, and they knew, uh, Windows Defender is using a fixed computer uh, name uh, used by the emulator. So if they, if they just check what is the computer name, if it's equal to HAL90H, they know that they are uh, in an emulator. So uh, not so good practice, uh, but uh, the second one is its exit if it's being run from uh, Russia and nearby countries. So we have a little bit of attribution here, uh, but we'll, trust me, we'll get much more uh, info later. Uh, and so they just uh, check their language and decide if it's uh, Russian or not. 
And uh, the third one was the expiration check. So it was limited to one uh, month uh, from compile time. And if, it, if you try to run it as a researcher after this month, it won't do anything. And it's packed, so uh, it can uh, be difficult uh, for some. And the attack is still uh, ongoing. Uh, this is a tool to deobfuscate strings that I wrote. And the sample is not public. And the C2 server was not known until now, but I will publish uh, the, all the details uh, uh, today. Uh, I also found the Telegram group API key used by this group to exfiltrate, uh, to exfiltrate sorry, uh, screen captures. Uh, the loader also downloads and executes the final Golang info stealer from a legit site. And the Golang malware is a cookie stealer. It's very complex. Uh, it steals off or or tokens. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of victims in large scale, uh, mostly via YouTube links. So uh, I will give some example, but uh, let's first uh, dis uh, discuss the Golang malware. So I don't know how much of you try to uh, reverse engineer uh, Golang uh, malwares, but it's a nightmare. Um, and uh, there, there, there are some tools, uh, uh, and uh, Jags uh, at Recon uh, um, uh, presented one that is better than what I, I used here because it was uh, before. But we can see that uh, I used uh, uh, an IDA script. Uh, when running it, I had a 8300 uh, unrecognized function. And after running it, uh, the rename function button, the script was able to detect 2,000 of them. So it was very helpful, but still uh, complex. Uh, and as I said, the infection vector is through uh, publishing YouTube links to an encrypted executable. Uh, and as we can see, there were 20,000 results on the right, uh, only for the 0909 password encrypted malware instance. So there were different instances, and uh, only in the, uh, for that instance, there are 20,000 different uh, YouTube links. And this threat actor also is smart, and it's published the link on a crypto app related uh, site, so it's logical because they want to steal cryptocurrency and wallets. So people that are interested in crypto uh, movies, so probably they will have a better chance uh, to have uh, wallets on their, uh, uh, on their computers. Uh, and also on video sharing platforms, so if you are using it, uh, be careful. Uh, and back to the info stealer lo loader code, this is very interesting, I think. Uh, I used the Telegram API, a uh, different one, get chat, and got an invite link. I was able to join the attacker Telegram group and become the 10th member uh, for months. Uh, and I was able to download all past messages, even before I joined and get in real time all messages from now on. So I'm, I'm, I'm like uh, in between. And on the left, you can see the configuration of the malware. Uh, we can see that it was configured to collect, it's, it's hard to see, but it's, it was configured to collect uh, screen captures and victims' environmental data such as OS, IP, and hardware ID. In the middle and on the right, you can see the exfiltrated victim screenshot and exfiltrated environmental data from the attacker telegram group. So we have a match, and using a simple tool to download, I download all victim screen captures, uh, and I have 35,000 script captures of different victims. So it's uh, like open for almost everyone. Uh, we can see some example of the stolen data, uh, which include both cryptocurrency, and you can see also NFT theft, they like NFT a lot. And hundreds of wallets were exfiltrated, and top balances can reach thousands of US dollars, and the, the attacker also exfiltrate the 12 word passphrase of wallets like MetaMask and the password. So from at that point, the attacker can control the victim's wallet. 27% of the victims are located in the US. Uh, the exfiltrated cookies are for wide range of services like beginning with PayPal, Amazon, games, bank, cryptocurrency wallets, Google Pay, and stake.com, which runs crypto betting platform. So let's speak about attribution. Uh, the first indication of the attacker origin is that all C2 server were located in Russia. So it's not surprising, right? Uh, in addition, the spoken language of the attackers is Russian, and they tried to hide it by replacing it with English, English after a while, but I have all the messages, so I know they are Russian and I was able to discover the attacker's IP located in Russia, the exact attack uh, IP, and the first 8,000 of the exfiltrated data messages originated from the same IP in Russia, which was used by the attackers for testing purposes, again, don't do it, and later as a C2 server. On the bottom, uh, we can see 
that uh, this, red, this is a red line info stealer that connects to the same IP address of the 8,000 messages. And it's also uh, using the red line stealer bot ID, Onyx 0.1. So I used the tele another Telegram bot API function. It's called get chat administrator. And we found that the group has six administrators. So nine hackers, myself, but six of them are our administrator. And one, one of them is Onyx Zero. So Onyx Zero, Onyx Zero point one. And the second is called uh, P2 memory. And then I found that Onyx is a creator of a threads for selling stolen tokens. And the second admin is P2 memory. And they are chatting with each other and uh, I don't know their real identity, but uh, they are real people. Uh, so let's speak about a little bit about takedown. The bot is administrator, and I could create, edit, or revoke the invite link, so nobody can uh, join. And I can also temporarily take it down by blocking all members. Or I can even set a webhook to automatically transfer all messages to safebridge.com, uh, which you can see was done successfully. Uh, so all of the victim messages just, uh, I didn't try to catch them, just uh, uh, stop them from reaching the real C2. And they temporarily lost all victims, and, but uh, probably they could uh, easily recover from uh, this attack. So uh, I gave them the same uh, score, you know, don't need to shout anymore. Uh, <laughs> we have a winner. Woo! <laughs> but uh, with different uh, mistakes. Okay, uh, this one is very, very interesting because I was, I'm monitoring them for almost a year now. Uh, it's still going on. And those are Turkish threat actors. They call themselves Ekmek Tekensi or something like this. In Turkish, it, uh, in English, it means the bread boat. And they're referring all the stolen cryptocurrency and NFT as bread, bring me bread, uh, and so on. Uh, so the bread boat. Uh, and they steal cryptocurrency with a different approach uh, from the Ukraine log. Ukraine logs try to infect a machine and steal the uh, cryptocurrency wallets. They are using zero infections techniques. So le let's describe them. So the PHP code redirects the exfiltrated data from the C2 web server to a Telegram group. In addition, the PHP code saves it to a local C2 server file named file uh, test.txt. And the victim clicks on the connect wallet button, as you can see on the top left, and enter the MetaMask passphrase this time. And this is a phishing page which writes the passphrase to the test.txt local file. Okay, the attackers would, uh, are working very hard to promote their uh, phishing lures. So they are paying Google for advertising their phishing sites. Uh, and the C2 server is the third result in my Google uh, search above. So they're doing good work. And they also target victims uh, using Telegram and other social not networks uh, via Twitter ads, for example. Uh, as we can see on the right, uh, the ads include a link to their MetaMask phishing site. So by now, uh, you know the drill. I joined via the invite link and download all messages. But after a short while, they sent me a message in Turkish, which I don't uh, understand, and I was uh, immediately kicked out. Uh, so I, I thought, is this the, the end? And then I figured out that they kick out Tomer Bile, my user, but they don't kick out their bot. So I just wrote a script to automatically download updates uh, using Get Updates uh, API and was able to monitor all the messages in the group until now for all, almost a year. Uh, and the script also uh, translated the messages, the script that I wrote, translated the messages from Turkish to English, so I, it, it will be easier for me. And the bot API is probably revealing here the attacker's ruining wallet address and passphrase, so I can control their, uh, the wallet. And on the bottom, they are sharing additional wallet addresses. The main uh, C2 server include more than 400 phishing domain names uh, added daily and from October 2021, and it's still active every day. Every day there are new domains. And the second phishing server, uh, which is still active also, is implemented crypto scam with different techniques. Uh, the, 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 the dumbest uh, method is like promise to uh, provide profit if you just send them your crypto. Uh, so don't, don't do it. Uh, 
and the other C2 servers exfiltrate the passphrase to local files or to Google Forms. Uh, I, I am I understand their attack in, in details, and the attackers' plans, uh, uh, the entire attack in details. They stole $30,000 uh, in, in just two hours, and then the boss set a target of $100,000 for this day. And on the bottom, we can see that they share the admin credentials to manage all their different C2 servers. But it's not legal to use it, uh, so, uh, but, and it's not required because they did a lot of OPSEC mi uh, mistakes, and all the tracked actor C2 servers uh, re uh, reveals the stolen user passphrase. So uh, this is just an example, but believe me. And uh, this is another example of an uh, unconfigured Laravel backend uh, like we saw earlier, and exposing the DB credentials and app key uh, when the expected parameter is not provided. So they expected a, a special parameter. I didn't provide them that, and they just print the, the, the password. Uh, the same exposed data is ex accessible by a second method by browse browsing to the .env file, which is textual and includes the same uh, credentials. The threat actor invested a lot of effort in phishing NFT, and the attacker is bragging in Telegram uh, that he has stolen 25 Ethereum. At that time, it uh, was worth $75,000 uh, using uh, phishing lures on the famous uh, NFT sites. Uh, as we can see, the C2 server is open there, and the main JScript includes the threat actor wallet address. They are using stolen credit cards in order to pay for the C2 server, and they also purchase stolen Redline Stealer credentials. They are also using different services in order to turn the stolen cryptocurrency into cash, including virtual credit card and laundry sites. We can see the address here. We can see the attacker's wallet address and withdrawal operations. So I'm monitoring all of their activities. And they steal money directly, to for, directly from victims, sorry, uh, bank accounts, in order to pay for Google Ads to promote their uh, phishing webs like we saw earlier. Here is another example of their active phishing activity, which is done a bit differently using additional Telegram groups. They also build a pyramid scheme to recruit members. Uh, each member is allegedly participating in mining cryptocurrency based on the Tron protocol, but actually is uh, NFTs and cryptocurrency is stolen. Uh, as we can see, the print screen here demonstrates how the threat actor used public tools like SQL Map to take over websites, legit websites, and they also upload web shells to different uh, vulnerable sites. Uh, and it was like a huge uh, campaign. And the attacker shared the entire C2 server code uh, using the Telegram group that I am in, uh, and I got all the databases. So the info table stores the victim private keys, and we can see that, that a simple Google search is for what the admin hash reveals that it's the password one, two, three, four, five, six. So amazing. <laughs> the login uh, leads to a Chester Finish admin panel, which is query the local collected victim wallets DB. Uh, the above cloud drive includes 300 gigabytes of victim exfiltrated data. It's not live anymore, but I have all of it. I will give it uh, to the proper uh, relevant uh, uh, um, agencies to look, uh, look up all of it and uh, um, report back to the victims. Uh, let's speak about attribution. Believe me, it will be funny. The entire conversation is, uh, in Telegram is Turkish, so we know for sure they are Turkish. Uh, we can see that the attackers are not using VPNs to manage their C2 server, and because they exchange all of the C2 server code, uh, so I have it. So the C2, the C panel last login file includes the IP address from Turkey. So that's their ad real address. But on 25 of June, after more than eight months of monitoring, uh, one of them published a competition at uh, r10.net. It's a public site forum uh, for the for the logo for their new site player.com, which is not just a phishing uh, site, and the username in the R10 forum uh, is called Morat. Morat. Morat can attack. And this led me to a bingo because I found a Twitter account with his photos and he tagged it as a blockchain account. And a few days later, he also got a message from his garage to collect his car with his real name uh, and license plate number. And so you can see that uh, it's, a, it's a real name. And on the right, uh, when, when, when you surf on, uh, on, uh, on Chrome, you can uh, 
sign in with your account and you have the pictures of the, your account, right? Uh, so if you can see on the right, it's the, 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 the picture of the other attacker. Uh, I, have, I have it from the print screen that they share between themselves. Uh, so these two members joined the Telegram group for a short while uh, in, uh, and they had four members. One of them is a member of the Turk Hack Forums and also uh, of registered domains. And sometimes you get to know your adversaries more than you ever expected. So uh, that's, that's it, that's it. Uh, uh, so this is his, his Telegram account. Uh, and I will skip and uh, I will speak a little bit about a, a Tunisian threat actor which got the worst grade, 78 uh, bad points. Uh, I will skip it because we, we have only five minutes. I, I have more interesting stuff later. Uh, so uh, they, they, they do the same mistake, open the, uh, compress the files. But what was very terrible uh, is that I, I got all of his uh, uh, victims, uh, uh, victim data. They have 12,000 uh, victims. Uh, but he registered uh, the Telegram group with his real name. So I have his real name, not a nickname. And I was able to find uh, his LinkedIn account is working uh, as a security consultant by day in a legit company and by night he's doing uh, uh, attacks against uh, victims and I also found his uh, Google certificates both on, uh, on, 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 on sending it on the Telegram attackers group and, and it's the same uh, certificate on his public LinkedIn account. So uh, and on the bottom you can see the tab with his real name. Uh, of, of, of his Facebook account. So I have a, a lot of crossing and it's a verified data. So I, I will skip uh, uh, two uh, uh, different uh, Iranian nation state threat actors. Uh, they did uh, Apple bypass, uh, two-factor authentication bypass for iCloud. Uh, it's a new technique. I got all of the source code because of their op operation security mistake. And I will share all the slides and all the details uh, on the site and also on other platforms. Uh, but I don't have enough time to speak about it. I, I want to speak four minutes about uh, this threat actor. This actually is a good, I don't know if it's a good, but it's the, it's the best operation security threat actor that I ever seen. And it's an Iranian nation state threat actor. is uh, is uh, the most persistent ones that I know of. They, it's been acting. Uh, uh, it's been active since 2007. So 15 years of, of operation. That's a lot. And I am uh, monitoring. I first discovered it in 2015. Uh, and wrote a lot of uh, uh, reports on it, and I also did them uh, a takedown on 2015, and they lost all of their very targeted victims. They were uh, oppositionals to the Islamic uh, regime, uh, and they were very targeted for seven years. Uh, and they lost, the Iranian lost all, all, the, all of the access to all of their victims, uh, uh, and, and returned in 2017 with uh, they learn from the mistakes and they got uh, with a very secure OPSEC uh, infrastructure. So they used two uh, uh, mechanisms. One is very common, the DGA, which is a domain uh, generation algorithm. Each week, 100 different uh, domain names were used as, as a C2 server. So sinkhole is, uh, is much harder, difficult from uh, the 2015 version where there were just like three outcoded domain names. Uh, but most, most interestingly, is the second uh, mechanism, which is uh, they use uh, C2 uh, signature verification uh, in order to verify that they are speaking with the real C2 server. Because I reverse engineer the DGA code, understand what will be the next uh, domain name, purchase the, those domain names before them, and the, all the victims connected to my, to my site. But when they, I have only their IPs because when they uh, download the signature files, uh, which is encrypted with the private key, uh, which I don't have, only the attackers have, they can verify that I'm not a, 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 this is not a legit site and just move on to the next uh, server, which will be verified. So uh, the, 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 uh, this means that uh, it's very hard to take them uh, down. And from 2017 until 2022, uh, you can see that uh, there were uh, some reports about this group, but no one uh, is able to do anything uh, to arm their operation. Uh, and I worked for it about three years. It was like a life mission. And uh, recently I found a weak, the weakest link in the infi chain, uh, the transmission of files from the C2 server in Europe to their attackers in Iran. So uh, to make 
uh, things short, I, I uh, develop uh, uh, a script uh, that uh, connects to the C2 server and downloads all of the victim's data. And I also found that they encrypt it in asymmetric keys, so I cannot open it because I don't have the right key. But uh, some, of the, some of it was uh, not encrypted, and I have some metadata that I was able to uh, deobfuscate. And I have the username, the host name of the victim, the path to the st store on the C2 server, the toner version, which is, toner is the, the uh, second step uh, tool. Uh, it's a very sophisticated tool, uh, which allows them to monitor and surveillance all of the victim's uh, data. And toner in French, uh, open pronounced it right, is thunder. And the first uh, uh, tool is called lightning. So just one minute. Uh, so the lightning, uh, the thunder come after the lightning. So I'll just finish with uh, a demo. Uh, it will be tw 20 seconds. Uh, and I will see you. Okay, so you can see that I'm downloading, I get a list of all the files in the C2 server in real time with their sizes and the URL to download them. And then I will run the same script with the all parameter and it will start downloading. It's a little bit uh, small, but uh, believe me, it will download all, all of the files. I will skip because it will be short. Uh, so I have a directory which sorted by all the victim's IPs uh, and we can see all the infiltration data. Okay, I'm, I finished, so sorry for this uh, blast and thank you.